You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Derry here from Drake Queen Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Fatal Force: Tragedy of the Lone Wolf Arc. So, as uh, one of you pointed out to me, the narrator is apparently Zero, and or however you say his name. And yeah, I can definitely see that. Um. He looks very similar. Yep, he looks like a... Now that I actually look at him, he's got a lot of the sim same features and such. I can definitely see him being a grown-up Zero. So, interesting how this will play out into the overall story. Hmm. Anyway, guys, let's jump right into it. Please sit back and enjoy the video. <clears throat> Hold up! <laughs> I couldn't resist. That's gonna be enough for now. <laughs> All right. Right now, you're back to your perspective, the main character. Let's begin. Do all five of your students get something like this? Like, why is Mickey even here? And that disguise? Man, people are gonna notice that. And like, seriously, what is that weird French accent? <laughs> oh my god, I cannot... Oh, I don't want to do... Uh, a really bad French accent, but I feel like I might. To any French people watching this, I mean no disrespect. I probably cannot pull off a French accent to save my life. So, here's my French Mickey, I guess. Mm. Uh, to all minions who have gathered here, to those who think they will die, given this is the final year for all of you. What the hell kind of line is this? Whoa, whoa, wait, what? The please will be rest assured that you're all gonna live happily ever after. I don't know what my accent is. I guess I'm trying to do French. I don't know. I... What? Nothing can stop us from enjoying our life with dignity and virginity. What? <laughs> oh my god. I don't... What is he even saying? I start looking around at the other students around me. Seems I wasn't the only one. The other students in the hall seemed to be confused and started muttering to each other. I mean, I really can't blame them. I mean, I guess the speech is for anyone concerned, but senior students? Silence, minions! Pay attention to this man who will tell you all how to survive in the outside world. A world that's full of cruel fates and deaths. For a brief moment, it felt like every student's eyes suddenly focused straight at him, perhaps shocked by the sudden reference of death again. He said it so loudly I could practically hear his wolfish undertone. All I know, time is a valuable thing. God, this is not a French accent. I don't know what the hell kind of accent this is, but I'm going to keep doing it. Watch it fly by as the pendulum swings. Watch it count... <laughs> no! No! No more! No Lincoln Park references! Come on! Oh my god. Watch it count down to the end of the day. The clock takes life. <laughs> I can't play this game with a straight face. I can't. Are those lyrics? They sound familiar. <laughs> Stop. Stop this. I can't handle it. It's going to kill me. I've become so numb. I can't feel you there. Become so tired. So much more away. <laughs> Lincoln Park? Seriously? That's all for my speech. Stay safe, everyone, and beware of the bloodless treat. I still don't exact. No! No! Stop clapping! No! I still don't exactly understand what any of that was. For an entire hour, it just sounded like he was spouting utter nonsense. I'm honestly surprised no one is questioning anything about Mickey's appearance. Like, like they're applauding him as well. Mickey left the stage and disappeared. I didn't even see where, it, where he disappeared off to. Is he some ninja or what? Yeah, he's a wolf ninja. All right, attention to all seniors. Please refer to the main bulletin board to find who your mentor will be until graduation. Afterwards, please meet up with your mentor as soon as possible. Mentor? I'm almost certain this is definitely new. I never knew there, there would be a mentor for seniors. Even then though, I don't know. I only have a few weeks left before the next full moon. 
I can't even make a decent plan for him in my future, given my fate is completely uncertain. Finding an arrow. Huh. I'm starting to imagine Draviar is here, as if he is watching over me. Probably is. You are all dismissed. Remember, names are listed on the main bulletin. I can see everyone rushing off to the bulletin board. I'll probably just wait for a little while longer, because it is incredibly crowded right now. I squat down and rest against a wall. As the time passes by, my mind starts to feel empty. I'm pretty bored right now. I go fish through my pocket that I always keep. Wait. My phone! It's gone now! I remember the last time I had to use it was to try and call my friend, but he never answered it. I must have lost it when that werewolf attacked me. Damn it! Oh well, the crowd is mostly gone now. I get up and leave the hall and head towards the main bulletin board. I look at everything tacked on it. It had a ton of information that I've been following on ever since I started studying here. Wow, it's already four years that I've been studying here, huh? I find the list of names and fingered my way through the list until I saw mine. Seems every mentor gets five students, and I've been put under... Mr. Anderson Care? Boo! Why do I have to end up in this with this lame-ass kid? Jennifer? Wait, is this a fucking Strangers with Candy type situation right here? Uh, if anyone doesn't get that reference, Strangers with Candy is a very funny uh, sitcom that was on Comedy Central many years back. Look it up if you can. I think Amy Sedaris was in it. <clears throat> oh, hey Jennifer. Do I know you? Hey, no, don't get close to me. Ew. At least I don't have to meet that fat friend of yours. Gross. Oh god, I hate her already. Jennifer! She's an idol at this college and is pretty, but has an extremely arrogant attitude. She's pretty? Uh, she looks like... She looks like a 70s mom cosplaying as a school kid. Or she might actually be that, okay. That is kind of actually the premise! That is actually kind of the premise of Strangers with Candy, holy shit. She had a whole fan club and would always party. She'd invite, like, everyone except for my friend and I. Uh, can you stop staring at me like that? You and your fat so she'd go, D What the fuck?! What the fuck is this shit?! Okay. <laughs> you and your fat so friends should go die in hell with the rest of the furry fandom. You're not even grateful about being human and want to be an animal. DISGUSTING! Oh yeah, she really despises furries as well. She even made a blog trash talking about the furry fandom. Mind you, she has like a million followers. At the very least, I'm an animal who learns some human decency. You're practically an animal yourself with that attitude. She locked eyes with me, enraged. Shut your mouth, kid! You're wasting my fucking time making me deal with you and your sick dog fuckers. Okay, she's really making my blood boil. I really, really want to just grab her neck and choke her. Maybe even break it. Nope, gotta calm myself or else... Ah, oh, my makeup is ruined! She ran off to the left. Seems she was headed off to the female lavatories to fix up her face, if you could even call it hers anymore. <laughs> That's a rather aggressive face you're making. Oh? I look around. I hadn't noticed the other girl that was near me. Linda? She looks cool. I like her style. You should take her words seriously. Everyone pretty much knows she's kind of bitchy. Kind of bitchy. She smiled at me gently. That helped calm me down a ton. So, you're also under Mr. Anderson? Yep. Seems so. Don't worry, though. I think he's a pretty good lecturer from what I've heard, and has always strived to help his students to the best of his abilities. I nodded her. I suppose that's fair. But I've never met him before. Well, I can't really blame you. Mr. Anderson is pretty new here. Mm, I think he transferred, like, last year and was teaching the juniors. Huh. No wonder. Mr. Anderson is a new lecturer here. Hmm. By the way, Mary, where's Timmy? I've always seen you with him. Did you guys have a fight earlier? Eh? No, 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 no. We're both doing fine. Or, well, I don't really know where he is exactly. I haven't found him. I see. The bullies probably got him again. Seriously, again? He's always been bullied since middle school, all the way into college, and he's still being bullied? 
There's a bunch of juniors that like bullying him as well. The hell is up? Ah, no wonder. All right, I gotta go. If you see him, please tell him that I need to him. I need him to help me out with the assignments. Hmm. Okay. Linda's been a really nice person. She's probably the only girl that's been genuinely nice to Timmy. But speaking of Timmy, where in the world is he? Linda smiled at me and walked off. Lord, she's really sweet at times. Let's see who's on the list. Under Anderson, there's five students, including me. All right, there's Jennifer, Linda, Timmy. Oh, hey, Kenny is on the list, too, and... <laughs> Seems we should be aware of something, judging by the speech that happened in the hallway. Once again, another girl that I hadn't noticed appears suddenly behind me, this time with purple hair. Gwen? She gives me a brief nod with a cute smile. What do you mean? I mean that the speech was provoking something or help, maybe even someone. I think I start feeling chills go down my spine. Does she know? Like, uh, how do you know that for sure? I can't help myself but start questioning her. Well, it's simple. Remember when he mentioned death? That ain't something you usually hear in these types of speeches, is it? Second, the lines he was reciting were coming from Lincoln Park song. Or, well, two for that matter, but he spliced it together in a way that didn't seem particularly arbitrary. And of course, lastly, he literally said, beware of the bloodlust treat. I didn't say anything. Rather, I began to ponder about what she had just told me. Thinking about it, I guess it makes more sense that the one who gave the speech would have to be Mickey. But... What the hell is Mickey? What the hell is Mickey doing in my school, of all places? Wait. I remember just this morning, just before Mickey left the room to just to just Draviar and I, they were exchanging glares, and I'm pretty sure Draviar was worried. And yet, Mickey just smiled at him and left, as if he was saying, Don't worry about me, I can handle this. These wolves, oh no. Don't tell me that they already know that something is about to happen. I think I get what this is all about. Everyone's here. Bloodlust. I think there's a werewolf amongst us all. Worse, the one that attacked me last night. Or that night. That's probably why Mickey came. He wanted to find it by provoking it. By giving the message that they're going to hunt them down. Nary, are you okay? You're starting to turn pale. I, yeah, ugh. Yeah, sorry. Sorry you sent me into a tad of a shock by what you said. You kind of sounded like a detective. She chuckled at my remark. Perhaps. One day. Perhaps. She playfully bumped her fist against my shoulder. She then waved and walked off. I now only have more questions for Draviar. It seems he is the one who's planning everything. Or at least, I think that's the case. I head out of the room. Everyone seems to be gone now. Maybe I should go back to my hostel. As I was walking, I could see someone that I had been hoping to appear. Timmy! What happened to you, man? Oh. He looks nice. Like, mean, what the... He looks so messy. Lifeless. He kind of has that toilet stall stench on him as well. Yeah, probably because... Why is it calling Timmy? Nary? Timmy, are you okay? Did the boys do this to you? I think I accidentally started, startled him. I raised my voice a bit too quickly. Oh, sorry, Timmy. I didn't mean to frighten you. I tried to comfort him by putting my hand on his shoulder. I'm... I'm alright. I'm pretty much used to it now. No, no, no. This is not okay, Timmy. You should report them in... No, don't worry about it. I'm fine. Seeing him like this, it just saddens me so much. I'm the one that should be saying sorry to you, Nary. Huh? What do you mean, Timmy? Remember a few days ago on the day of the Furcon, when I was supposed to come to see you and buy tickets together, but I didn't? Don't worry about it, Timmy, but what happened? Well, a lot happened that day. I'm pretty certain I got robbed, and... and... It's fine, Timmy, believe me. We can make it next time, together. I smile at him warily, hoping he'd at least cheer up a little bit. Honestly, I feel really bad, though. For that to happen... Man, that day was really the day of tragedies, huh? <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm strong. Yeah. Right. We both laughed it off awkwardly. It seems he's a bit more cheered up now. Well, I better go home now. I'll see you later, Nary. Oh, by the way, I heard you got sick for the past three days. It was probably my fault to let you. No, it's completely fine, Timmy. Want me to walk with you? Nah, 
It's fine. My dad is already waiting for me outside ever since the robbery, and besides, our parents are just generally worried about me. I see. Please be careful, then. Timmy smiled at me and left, waving at me as he walked. Even though he's not exactly in the best of states, he's still my best friend. We always share our problems together. If I can control this werewolf power, I'll definitely try and protect him. Also, sick? I was in a coma for those few days after the attack. I guess Draviar was fabricating some excuses for my absence in college. I continue walking down the path until I reach the next building. I open the door and step in. Ooh. There's a yawn. Mm. It seems oddly quiet here. Where did everyone go? I walk up to where the lift is, step in, and call for the sixth floor where my room is located. I open my dorm's room. I open my dorm's door. I nearly had a heart attack. There was a huge black figure standing in front of my study table. Oh. Tsk. Tsk. Oh. You have such a terrible handwriting, boy. Draviar! Yo. He looked pretty thrilled. He looked at me with such an innocent... He looked at me with such innocence while still holding my notebook. So, how did you even get in here? Oh, I just strolled in and opened the door. He was already teasing me. That is a cool-ass... Man, that is a cool-ass duster. But, like, surely people are going to notice that you're a wolf and... Wait, did Zero come with you? Even though it hasn't been long since I've known them, I had a faint idea of how Zero smelt like. Javier pointed toward the bed. A picture? Look carefully. I walk up near the picture. It seemed to be a large painting of... <laughs> ha! Oh, come on, guys. Really? The Mona Lisa, except only with Zero's face on it. Zero had been staying pretty much completely still for a few moments, and then suddenly blepped at me. Hey, little kitty boy. Our new cat's coming over here. His name's Oreo. Yes. Hey, Mr. Oreo. It's okay. No, it's alright. You got your skittish. Anyway. Are you serious? You guys are insane. Eh, but it was still fun. Right, Zero? <laughs> Yay! He's always screaming in happiness. So, now it's you, Zero, and Mickey. You guys came here with just these kinds of disguises? Won't people notice? I mean, maybe? That's not exactly the answer I wanted to hear. I stare at him with curiosity in my eyes, hoping I could get a proper answer. Javier ignored me and kept reading my notebook, occasionally chuckling at some of its contents as he flipped through. Uh, this wolf really likes to make fun of me. Finally, Javier looked up from my notebook with a small grin. All right, fine. I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how, but I'm not sure if you're going to believe me or not. Just tell me. Well then, first I need you to close your eyes and don't peek. Well, all right then. I closed my eyes hesitantly. Moments later, I could hear him saying something. By the prayer upon thee. Secret technique, art of the wolves. Hidden. Uh, is this some kind of mantra or spell? No response. The room was dead silent. Draviar? Still no response. I opened my eyes slowly. He's... gone. And Zero is as well. I could feel my head being poked by someone. I swiveled around to see who was behind me. Hey! I already told you not to peek. He snarled, looking at me with a slightly puked face. Then what? What gives? How are you supposed to show me if you tell me to close my eyes? I growled at him. Draviar chuckled. Is he really just teasing me again? I shoved my angry face at him to try and see if he'd understand that I don't like being made a fool around too often. Instead, he, instead he just smiled and brushed my hair with his huge hand. Why so serious, silly head? You keep making fun of me! Arrgh. Oh, that's very scary. He continued to tease me yet again. Okay, anyways, I just heard you say something that was spell-like. Are you using magic? I kind of just made a rough guess and blurted it out then. He scratched his head. Well, how do I put this? You can call it magic, but it's not exactly that. Huh? I murmured it and blinked my eyes several times, still confused. 
And I think for now we'll just call it an enchantment. Basically some kind of force of nature that surrounds us. You see, even this table has a teensy force of nature. It came from a tree, and our bodies has some kind of life force. By combining these two, it can become something else, though there are several rules that need to be taken. I call it the Wolf's Prayer. I gulped slightly. I'm rather awestruck that this kind of stuff exists. Like, it's not as surprising when magic and superpowers are used in a comic book, mangas, anime, movies, just anything fictional and all, but it's differently when it's face to face. Though, I'm almost forgetting about the fact that even werewolves exist, so it wouldn't be that far-fetched for something like this to exist as well. Wait, wait, wait. So, does that mean I can do it too? Dravio just laughed at me. Ha! Huh. Nope. Why? Or are you just being stingy not teaching me because you're scared that I might be better than you, hmm? Oh, alrighty. There we go, guys. Oh, that has been a new episode. Ugh, a fatal force. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. I hope you guys are enjoying the longer videos. And I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.